Sunny 95. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the show that brings you man-on-the-street interviews, celebrity guests, groundbreaking research, and heartwarming stories about the reasons we smile. Our show is also known as everything you've always wanted to know about dentistry, but we're too numb to ask. Hello, I'm General Dentist Dr. Kavitko, and thank you for joining me today. The following views and opinions do not necessarily reflect those of this station, its staff, management, or parent company. To hear a replay of this show or one of the great shows that previously aired, log on to TheReasonsWeSmile.com or iTunes, keyword Dr. Kavitko or The Reasons We Smile. Listeners should not use Dr. Kavitko's comments and advice in place of an actual dental exam. Brighten your life with a smile that shows the professional touch of Dr. Kavitko. Time now for The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Call 459-9769 to discuss your dental issues. Now, here's your host, Dr. Kavitko. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile. I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is episode number 624. Thank you so much for joining me. It's the last episode of the year. And what we're going to be talking about is a couple weeks ago, I attended my IV sedation recertification class, and we're going to talk about the kinds of things that I learned. And it's a part two, because we talked about this a couple weeks ago as well. All right, before we get started, let me remind you, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Dr. Kavitko. And if you'd please go to my office Facebook page and like us, that would be awesome. It's Dr. Kavitko and Associates. All right, all past episodes, complete with video, are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com, and we're streaming live on Facebook. Okay, so before we get to our topic, I uh, just want to say, you know what, congratulations to the Buckeyes for a great season. They came up short last night, but... They really gave it their all, and it was just it just came down to one or two plays, you know, at, there at the end. They could have done it. They almost did it, but uh, maybe next year. Okay. So, as I mentioned, I've been doing this show for quite a while. I've been doing this show for 12 years now. And the reason is, is because I want everyone, I want you to realize how important your smile is. Just how important that thing that we call the oral cavity is to you and your life. So for example, I've mentioned before that uh, every laugh, every smile, every chew, every word, every kiss uh, involves your teeth, involves your mouth, your lips, your teeth, your gums, everything. Okay, think about that. I mean, really, really think about that. The kiss, obviously, if you have grunge mouth, nobody wants to kiss grunge mouth, right? And if you uh, can't, if you're missing so many teeth that you can't speak properly, well, um, you're going to be misunderstood or you're going to be thought of as maybe not as bright as maybe you are, but you can't say the words correctly, right? Uh, a smile. A smile is supposed to uh, imply friendship. I'm happy to meet you. Um, maybe I want to get to know you better. But if when you smile it turns people off, they may not want to get to know you better. You know what I mean? Uh, every laugh. I mean, uh, the people who have... Uh, have let their teeth go, uh, and now they have uh, rotten teeth, broken teeth, missing teeth, they're afraid to smile out loud. Uh, they put their hand up to their mouth, or they put their head down, or they just smile with their lips closed, you know? And so, I think, to be honest, I think we're making headway. I think that uh, uh, maybe a decade ago or more, people weren't really thinking about their mouth, and now they are. Which is great, which is great news. Don't know how much of uh, uh, how much I'm um, responsible for on that. Maybe none, but it does make me feel good to hear uh, people say things like, "Here's an example. I went to a uh, service center uh, a few days ago, and when I uh, walked in, and the uh, receptionist uh, realized that I was a dentist, she goes, "Oh, you're a dentist." I go, "Yeah." She goes, "That's really neat." She goes, "My ten-year-old son wants to be a dentist." And I think that's really cool, because there was a time when almost no one grew up wanting to be a dentist. It was literally unheard of. It was always kind of like an afterthought. And now you have people, not, you know, a lot of people planning to become dentists when they grow up. My uh, one dental assistant's daughter um, uh, announced that she wanted to be a dentist probably two or three years ago after working at the office. She's now been accepted into uh, Kentucky University, and uh, she hopes that after her first four years, she will be able to apply to dental school and get in. Uh, she's kind of funny. She's so motivated. She ordered or asked for, for Christmas, 
these models that help you learn how to play sutures. It looks like uh, it has teeth and gums and like little rub rubber gums and stuff, and, and you can uh, suture them over and over again for practice. She's a little bit ahead of herself because she hasn't even started college yet. She's a high school senior, but it's really cool that she's planning so far ahead. So anyway, yeah, I just think that um, um, people need to think more about their mouth. I mean, we, we take better care of our car than we do ourselves sometimes, a lot of times, you know. People walk around with a sore tooth, a broken tooth, they can't smile, but I guarantee you, if their car breaks down, they're going to figure out a way to get it fixed, right? And guess what? Nobody has car repair insurance. So I hear all the time, well, I don't have insurance, so I can't go to the dentist. That is absolutely, absolutely not true. Okay, so let's talk about why another reason people don't go to the dentist, they haven't been going. It's not the money, maybe a little bit, not the insurance, maybe a little bit. It's fear. People are afraid of going to the dentist. They're afraid of being hurt. Maybe they have been hurt in the past, and they're thinking that it's going to be like that again. And that leads me to today's topic, which was my, or is, my IV sedation recertification class. So the way I handle it at my office is to offer sedation options for people. Because let's face it, if you come and you have a procedure and you don't remember what you had, or you don't remember much about being at my office, that's a good day, right? <laughs> Especially if I got a lot of things done. And so, um, along with laughing gas, nitrous oxide, oxygen, uh, we offer oral sedatives, oral sedation. So I have this little cocktail that I have people swallow. And we wait 15 minutes, and then we turn on the laughing gas. And by that time, they're in pretty much la-la land. And we can, you know, numb you, and we can do whatever you need. And you hardly even know it. You're not really aware. You, you know you're there. Like I said, you're in La La Land. Uh, you may be in Dr. Kavitko, uh, my office, but you're also in La La Land. So along with that comes um, the fact that we have to be certified to do this. And in order to stay certified, we have to take, uh, every two years, we have to take a seven-hour course. And I take it every year just because I want to make sure it's uh, fresh in my mind. And so I'm glad I do because each year there's slightly different information. There, there are new things that have come out. So the first time we broached the subject, which was, like I said, a couple weeks ago, I want to make sure I don't repeat myself. So I just want to, and I want to remind those of you that weren't tuned in, the kinds of things that we talked about. Not all of them, but I'll just give you like a general list here. So um, there are 7 million Americans dependent upon opioids. And so one of the things that uh, the course talks about is how to be responsible with our prescribing policies, make sure we're not responsible for people becoming addicted to opioids, all right? There have been more, there are now more overdoses than motor vehicle accidents, people dying from overdoses than dying from motor vehicle accidents. 137 million prescriptions for hydrocodone in 2013. And um, things like, um, you know, we talked about how we have to verify a person's drug history before we give them opioids, something that I don't think a lot of people knew. Uh, how did we get into this mess? There are, oftentimes, there are, say, 28 pills prescribed for somebody who's had their wisdom teeth out, and yet they only use 13. So there are 15 sitting in a medicine cabinet somewhere, so we have to be careful, uh, first of all, if they are 13, that they get somehow destroyed and not sitting there so that somebody's grandchild or niece or nephew or brother or brother-in-law can get them. And, um, and so uh, that's what we covered last time. So now let's talk about the things that we didn't get to uh, when we were doing this at first. Uh, one of the things I want to mention, oh, you know what I forgot to tell, tell you? Uh, those of you that listen on a regular basis already know this, but we always do a Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. And uh, normally I would have said that eight minutes ago or nine. Uh, so that you could be ready, but I didn't. And so now those of you that are listening right at the moment are going to have a chance in just a couple minutes to win free flowers from DeSantis Florist. Let me give you the phone number now so you can pre-program it into your phone. It's 614-459-9769. 614-459-9769. Okay, so, uh, and I'll just kind of, you know, if you just listen for the next few minutes, you're going to know the answer. It'll make it easy, and you can get those awesome flowers from DeSantis. So one of the things that has come out of this opioid crisis is 
the pharmacy board, the medical board, the dental board, um, the drug, administra- drug enforcement administration, all these agencies are working together to try to minimize the number of opioid pills that people are prescribed and the challenges that uh, uh, we face then with trying to minimize that number. And so there was a study done that determined, and what they did, they took a number of people that had um, tonsils and adenoids removed and they gave uh, different uh, groups of people different regimens of pain control. And what was very interesting that came out of that is that they discovered that if a person takes a 200 milligram ibuprofen tablet, which is Advil, at the same time that they take a 500 milligram acetaminophen tablet, which is Tylenol, that that combination is actually better than an opioid. When I first heard that, I'm like, what? That can't be true. But it is. And the reason it is, is because each of those two medications works in a different way. It uses a different mechanism to provide the pain control that we're looking to achieve. And so you have this additive effect of how, uh, of how, how they work. Now, I mentioned uh, 200 milligrams of ibuprofen and 500 milligrams of acetaminophen. And so... If you are about to have a procedure, the recommendation is is that you start to take these every four hours, the day be- at least one day before you come in for your procedure, and that you actually set an alarm so that you take them every four hours. Not, you know, and after the procedure, for example, if you are still comfortable, if you don't feel like you need anything for pain, the recommendation is you still take the ibuprofen and the and the acetaminophen. Okay, you still take it every four hours. That's why you set your alarm. So getting that in your bloodstream every four hours for a day before the procedure, let's say you're having your wisdom teeth out or you're coming to me for a gum graft or I'm placing an implant, do that every four hours. And then after the procedure, continue to do it. And uh, you're going to find that you're fine. You know what I mean? Surgery is supposed to make you a little uncomfortable. It's not supposed to be completely pain-free. But um, if you do this, you're going to find that it's you just don't, need much okay now not only do you have the option of the 200 milligram and 500 milligram remember 200 ibuprofen 500 acetaminophen but these studies also determine that if you take twice that amount so if you take 400 milligrams of ibuprofen and a thousand milligrams of acetaminophen that's even better and it's much better and so if you happen to be one of the people that maybe the first dose I mentioned wasn't quite working, well, you could then switch to the 400 milligrams of ibuprofen, which, by the way, is two tablets. And in the Tylenol realm, when I say 500 milligrams, that's the extra strength Tylenol. So if you took two of those, so if you took two ibuprofen, two extra strength Tylenol, Tylenol then you're going to be in pretty good shape. Now, the other thing that we do is oftentimes... I just want to be safe and uh, be be sure that you're covered, you know? Because, again, I'm all about pain control. That's why I do the IV sedation and the oral sedation and the laughing gas and all of that stuff. And so there's this thing now they're calling a rescue dose. So what I do then is I write patients a rescue dose of Norco. Norco is dihydrocodine. It is an opioid, as you can tell from the name. And there are six tablets. And chances are, you won't even need to buy them. And chances are, if you buy them, you won't even need them. And if you do buy them and don't need them, please make sure they they get destroyed so that other people don't become addicted by accessing them. And when I come back, we're going to talk about ways that people wind up accessing them. But let me just remind you that uh, 400 milligrams of ibuprofen together with 1,000 milligrams of acetaminophen provides better pain control than taking 200 milligrams of ibuprofen with 500 milligrams of acetaminophen. Okay? Uh, We're going to do Dr. Kavitko's question of the day, but before we do, we'd like you to listen to this. This station will not be held liable for any contesting during The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Participation in the contest allows Dr. Kavitko to record and broadcast your name and call. One winner per household, prizes are non-transferable, cannot be substituted, and are subject to taxes and fees. This station cannot be responsible for the inability to enter the contest, whether due to equipment malfunction or telephone difficulties. All decisions of Dr. Kavitko concerning this contest or eligibility are final. Mm-hmm. 
And now it's time for Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. Okay, and the question is, is a true or false question? I tried to make it easy. After all, we're still involved in the holidays, right? So, true or false, taking 400 milligrams of ibuprofen together with 1,000 milligrams of acetaminophen provides better pain control than taking 200 milligrams of ibuprofen with 500 milligrams of acetaminophen. All right, is that true or is that false? The winner's going to receive free flowers from DeSantis Florist. They'll be delivered to your place of business this Tuesday afternoon. The number to call, 614-459-9769. That's 614-459-9769. So go ahead and call now. You won't believe it, though. I want to hear your mind. And there's nothing else in the world tonight. She said people don't take the time. Hey, people don't take the time. Hey, what's going on? It's Keith Carlos, winner of America's Next Top Model and star of Chocolate City 2. You can look for my smile courtesy of Dr. Kavicko on the CBS television network where I play Danny on the hit soap opera, The Bold and the Beautiful. Stay tuned to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavicko, the world's most interesting dentist. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavicko, general dentist and host of The Reasons We Smile radio and road show. Did you know that you no longer need to visit several different dental professionals to get more complete dental care? We handle everything from cleanings and orthodontics to restoration, implants, and smile makeovers. All in my office. Get the most advanced technology and procedures available today. It's more complete dentistry. Visit World's Most Interesting Dentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. Dr. Kavitko! Let's go! Yeah! Hi, I'm Johanna, and I've been a dental patient at Dr. Kavitko and Associates for over 10 years. I would really recommend Dr. Kavicko for your family's dental care. They're friendly. They're always there to help me. I feel like family when I walk in the door. It's clean. It's comfortable. Even if I have to bring my kids, they have a great playroom for them. I know when I'm with Dr. Kavicko, they are taking that extra time to make sure that I'm going to be the healthiest I can be. They've been great. I love them. Call Dr. Kavitko and Associates today. 614-262-9588. Hi, this is Richard Simmons. Dr. Kavitko's here, and he's going to help you with all of your problems. Uh, are your teeth yellow? He can fix that. Are you missing a tooth? He can put a new one in. How is that? <laughs> That's very good. Thank you, Richard. Okay, we're back. We have Tiffany from Westerville on the line. Hey, Tiffany, how are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for listening and calling in. And do you have the answer to Dr. Kavicko's question of the day? The answer is true. True. That seemed obvious, didn't it? Yes. Although I thought some people would think it was a trick question. Because <laughs> sometimes more isn't better. So, Tiffany, what do you think about the, the idea that this is better than uh, an opioid? Did you know that? I did not know that. So but no. I think that's good because I don't like taking pills anyways. So. Right. It's a bit surprising, but in a good way. Awesome. Yeah. Tiffany, what do you do for a living? Home health care. Home health care. Awesome. Okay, so you're right there in the trenches, aren't you? And you see these pills. People have 20 and 30 pills they take a day, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. Well, hey, stay on the line because we want to get the information uh, where we can send those flowers to you on Tuesday. Now, we do have a holiday coming up, so um, if it's uh, another day, we'll let you know if it's not on Tuesday, okay? Okay, thanks. All right, thank you. Okay, if you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is The Reasons We Smile. It's episode 624. If you're doing math, that's about 12 years of doing this show, folks. And uh, I'm here live in the studio. So um, it's, uh, but I, it's because I have a passion for what I do. I have a passion for what I do, and I want to enhance the, uh, the lives of all of the people I come into contact with through your smile. So we were talking about the ways that people can get these pills that they're not supposed to have. And um, there are several. We mentioned a couple last week where sometimes uh, um, people figured out that uh, they go to an open house, a house that's for sale, and a husband and wife might split up and one of them goes and uh, uh, scours the medicine cabinet for pills while one is keeping the realtor busy maybe checking out another room. <coughs> another would be, uh, in fact, here's some stats for you. Uh, oh, and when also last week, or two weeks ago, we mentioned that sometimes movers will do the same thing. Interesting, because now all of a sudden you have strangers in your house, right? Okay, here's some stats, though. Adolescents 
uh, and non-medical use of prescription opioids. The most common source, 50.2%, is getting them from somebody else at school. A friend at school brings them. 31.5% uh, of uh, kids, adolescent kids, get their medication, get these medications from a parent. They're given to them because the parent uh, says, uh, oh, you know, why don't you try this? I was given this for my, um, my hip surgery, and I think it'll work for you. But here's another one. 41.6% of girls get them from a parent. So more girls, like 10% more uh, girls get them from a parent the assumption would be in my mind, hopefully that's not, I shouldn't be assuming, but might be uh, cramps or something, right? Girls face that and boys don't have to. 60% of boys got them from school. Got them from somebody at school. 88% <coughs> of boys and 92.6% of girls used opioids orally, so they took them as you would normally take them once they got their hands on them. But, uh, but of the non-oral use, 93% of people would snort it. They would, like, I guess, grind it up into a powder and, and snort it. Now, I guess I'm naive. I wouldn't have even thought of that. <laughs> I just wouldn't, and I still don't. I don't even understand where this knowledge base comes from, although today I guess it's the Internet. The majority of youths get their opioids from friends, and so we feel in dentistry and medicine that it's our job to try to minimize that and only take these medicines uh, uh, if you need them, if they're properly prescribed. And uh, there's something else, a little factoid, that um, I want you to know, that as a general dentist, I cannot prescribe continuously for more than 12 weeks. Okay, that's three months, right? So if you have a toothache, I can't give you, I can't keep you uh, drugged up on pain pills for three months. I would never do that anyway. I'm actually glad they made it a rule because um, keep that in mind because uh, we dentists, we're limited to prescribing medications only for oral uh, issues, teeth, gums, you know, head, neck kind of thing. But we can't, we're not your long-term uh, supplier. And I really almost feel bad for the, not almost, I do feel bad for the physicians who uh, treat this chronic back pain, chronic neck pain that you can't see, there's no scar, there's no redness, there's no swelling and yet people are in terrible pain and somebody has to help manage that for them. But as a dentist, my policy has always been this. If I didn't cause your pain, I don't provide any um, medications of any kind. I will treat you. So if you come in and you're swollen and you need a root canal, I will do the root canal, I'll do whatever it is you need, and then I will give you medication. But if I, you come in and say, oh, I have this broken tooth, it's been hurting, and I say you need a root canal and a big filling in the crown, and you say, yeah, but I'm too busy, or I don't have the money, or I'm going on vacation, or whatever it is, I'll say that's fine. But when people ask me, can you give me medication to keep me comfortable until I do get back in, the answer has always been and will always be no. Can't do that. I can treat you and cover any discomfort that may have come out of that procedure, but I can't just keep you drugged up. Okay, it, first of all, it won't really work in most instances in dentistry anyway, because if it's an abscess, you don't have blood flowing to that area anyway. You know, big blob of granulation tissue is not letting the, um, the antibiotic, you already have antibodies in your blood, it's not letting the antibiotic get to the source. And so uh, the pain medicine would just be masking it, and obviously, you know, you can't be on that for long. So that's just something to keep in mind. Okay, something else to keep in mind, and this might be uh, for some, uh, even some uh, dentist or dental office personnel. You know what? I better go to a break. Uh, so what I'm going to talk about is the number of safe uh, cartridges of, of local anesthetic for a child when we come back. All right, you're listening to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, and we'll be right back. You can take me as I am, not just a little bit. This is Clark Kellogg. Stay tuned for more of Dr. Kavitko. Estás escuchando con Dr. Kavitko aquí en su sesión favorita. Hi, I'm Dominique Reigert. Like what you hear? Why not use the show to promote your product or service by becoming a sponsor? Call 614-262-9588 to learn how. That's 614-262-9588. Call now. 
Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of the Reasons We Smile Radio and Roadshow. I've been honored to help several famous people get a perfect smile, like Keith Carlos and Dominique Rygaard from America's Next Top Model and Ted the Golden Voice Williams from right here in Columbus. Isn't it time you had a celebrity smile? It costs less than you might think, and most of the time, it can be done in one visit. A new smile can make a world of difference. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. I'm Grandpa, and I go to Dr. Kavitko, and I still have all my teeth. Real ones. Where's my glasses? <laughs> Okay, we're back. If you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kvitko. This is The Reasons We Smile. It's episode 624. And before the break, I said I was going to give you a sense of how much local anesthetic would be good for a typical child. So let me give you that. And if you're in the dental field, you can listen up as well. A good refresher for you. All right, so a 44-pound child is 20 kilograms, if you're converting you know, to kilograms, which is what we do. The maximum recommended dose of lidocaine is 7 milligrams per kilogram. So if you take the 7 milligrams per kilogram and you multiply it by 20, you get 140 milligrams as the maximum safe dose of the lidocaine. That happened, and there are in, uh, uh, if you use four cartridges of lidocaine, that local anesthetic that we use, that's 144 milligrams, which would be the maximum safe dose then. So for a 44-pound child, the maximum safe dose of anesthetic is four of those cartridges, okay? All right, so that's just something to, uh, a lot of parents are in the room uh, these days when they come to the dentist. We've always encouraged it. Uh, and kids like it when mom and dad are there, makes them feel safe. And so if you happen to be in the room and your child is having a procedure, uh, kind of pay attention and kind of monitor that uh, it's not more than four cartridges. I will tell you that keep in mind that if the procedure takes an hour uh, in the in so like 55 minutes into the procedure, if they've already used four at the beginning, you can use more then, but uh, not all at once. Okay, so okay, so let's see now. Um, we I want th- another thing I want you to know is that over the counter drugs. When you see that the directions on that box and it says you know take 200 milligrams every four hours, that's not the prescription strength dose. That's the over-the-counter dose. So uh, we medical professionals, we're up on what the maximum safe dosages are. And so we can give you the prescription strength dose or tell you what to take, even though we don't have to write you a prescription. Okay? So here's an example. Ibuprofen, we mentioned that you can take 200 or 400 milligrams, right? And 400 milligrams is better than two. But the maximum safe dose per, per day for 24 hours is 3,200 milligrams, okay? That would be 800 milligrams every six hours. And you'll find that Motrin, which is oftentimes prescribed for women who are dealing with cramps, uh, comes in 400, 600, and 800 milligram tablets, okay? So just because it's over the counter doesn't mean it's not a great drug and it's not strong enough to do what you need. It's just the dosing has to be adjusted uh, correctly to do that, okay? So I'm looking at the clock. Uh, I need to look at the clock because it's starting to look like I might be out of time. Uh, let's see. Let me bring it up. Okay. So, yeah, it looks like I'm pretty much out of time. So anyway, yeah, uh, thank you so much. I, I do appreciate everybody listening for these 12 years, and I hope we're bringing some uh, good information to you that you find interesting. And, again, I think it's cool that kids these days grow up wanting to be dentists because we do so much. We change lives. You know what I mean? Doctors save lives, we change lives. And um, it's so cool. I did this makeover for this woman uh, 11, 12 years ago on her 10th anniversary of when I did her makeover. She sent me a plaque and she sent me a, a card that said, my smile anniversary. I want to thank you. Isn't that cool? So anyway, okay. It looks like that is all the time we have. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. It's at Dr. Kavitko. And if you'd go to my uh, Facebook page and like us, that would be awesome. Remember that all past episodes, complete with video, are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com. Be sure to tune in next week and every week right here on your favorite station. Goodbye.
This is Carly Red from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, the hit show on VH1, urging you to tune in next week with my dentist, Dr. Kavitko. If you're interested in learning more about this and other dental health topics, go to TheReasonsWeSmile.com to access full episodes of Dr. Kavitko's show. If you'd like Dr. Kavitko, the world's most interesting dentist, to speak at your next event, please call 614-262-9588. That's 614-262-9588. 